Well, today we're very proud and pleased to have a chance to speak with the four men that astonished the entire world just a few weeks ago with the official confirmation of Project Horizon and everything that that entails. Uh, gentlemen, you may not be fully aware of this, but right now you are likely the four most talked about men in the world, and yet we know nothing about you. Now, Major Mattingly, I understand you're in command up there. Can you can you tell us something about yourself? Sure. Uh, my name is Robert James Mattingly, Jr., and I'm a major in the United States Air Force. Well, I've never heard anybody refer to you as Robert or Bob or... <laughs> yes, sir, Major Bob. <laughs> is, everybody refers to you as Mace. Is that some kind of nickname? That actually, it's my tactical call sign. Would you mind telling us how you got it? While I was uh, doing a routine ICS test in a rocket zipper, that would be the NF-104 Starfighter, I was leveled about 35,000 feet, just under Mach 2. I lit the AR-2, and just as I was about to start the pitch-up maneuver, it exploded. Your airplane exploded? No, no, no just the rocket engine. Took the entire vertical stabilizer with it, though, and since the 104 is a T-tail, the elevators departed as well, so I had to punch out just a tick over Mach 2. Anyway, when I got back to Edwards, the first thing the flight surgeon says to me is, so what's it like to reject that Mach 2? And I said, it was like getting hit in the face with a big frickin' mace. <laughs> you know, you're sitting there in air-conditioned mm. comfort, and the next instant you're looking at 1,500 miles an hour of airspeed, so yeah, it hurt. Anyway, the name's stuck, so, um, that's me. Wow. Well, that's quite a story. Now, um, Grim, is it? Yes, ma'am. Unofficially, obviously. Can you tell us about yourself? Well, ma'am, yes, I can. Uh, my name is Stephen Christopher Sinclair, and I'm a command sergeant major in the United States Army Corps of Engineers. And how did you get the name Grim? Uh, Ma'am, uh, Command Sergeant Major is not a commonly seen rank, and we have a significant amount of authority for enlisted personnel anyway. So the ranks sometimes say that running into an actual CSM is like bumping into the Grim Reaper. Okay, so anything you'd like to add to that? No. All right. And next we have... Yes, hello. Uh, my name is Jeffrey T. Gordon at the TS for Thomas. And I'm on extended assignment from Naval Reactors, or to be more precise, I'm a graduate of the United States Navy's Naval Nuclear Propulsion Program, which of course lies under the regulatory umbrella of the National Nuclear Security Administration. I hold the rank of commander in the United States Navy, and my military occupational specialty is nuclear engineering. Well, that sounds very impressive. Thank you. I think so too. Now, of course, there's a lot of study involved, and you never really stop learning, so it, it keeps me on my toes. Wonderful. And, and finally... Gordo, so, so, sorry to interrupt. Gordo is not a call sign or anything. It's just kind of a nickname the guys gave me. It, you know, doesn't really mean anything. Well, thank you, Gordo. And finally, we have this very tall gentleman. I'm not sure gentleman's exactly the term we're looking for here. Well, thank you, Bob. Hi. Hello. How are you? Well, I'm very well, thank you for asking. And you? I am spectacular, thanks for asking. So, what can you tell us about yourself, Doug? Well, uh, what would you like to know? Okay, well, why don't you start with the basics then? Well, all right, I can do that. Douglas Elliott Davenport, Lieutenant Commander, United States Navy, and my tactical call sign is Sparks. Yeah, just don't call him Sparky. No, he's right. Don't ever, ever call him Sparky. You know, if you guys want to finish for me here, I've got an ice-cold hams waiting for me in the fridge. So... Honestly, it's like living among jackals up here sometimes. Behave yourself. You're on national television. We're not on national television, Grimms. There's no such thing as national television anymore. We're on the goddamn internet. So, Doug, I understand that you're a pilot. Well, I am when there's no skill required, just ma'am. No, I'm sorry, I don't understand. 
What if you have to do something that does require a lot of skill? Well, in a case like that, then I would have to revert to being a naval aviator. Okay, here we go. There's a difference? Hell yes, there's a difference. A pilot has to stop a highly streamlined supersonic aircraft within, let's say, 8,000 feet of runway. That's not easy. And naval aviators, on the other hand, we have to do it within about 150 feet, which means between the 50-yard line and the end zone. So that's less than 2% of the available runway that old ham hands over there needs if he's having a really good day and is right on the ball. So let me see here. Uh... 8,000 feet versus 150 feet. That means if my math is correct, and it is correct, then a naval aviator would be 53.33333 times better at flying an aircraft than your typical hun driving chair force puke. Uh, you're going to have to excuse him, ma'am. Uh, Sparks is the kind of guy who puts on his flight suit to go to McDonald's, so he's kind of you know, <laughs> all eat up about this kind of thing. Oh, man. Oh, man. Well played, sir. <laughs> well, uh, that escalated quickly. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, there is your exclusive first interview with Project Horizons Major Mace Mattingly and the last man on the moon. <laughs> 